Welcome back. Today marks 30 years since a horrific attack on board an LIRR train. Colin Ferguson opened fire inside a car, killing six people and injuring several more. Covering the story since the very beginning, through the trial and the aftermath, is NJ Burkett here with us. Uh, NJ, mm. thanks for being here. Please. Well, I, so sobering. This is before we talked about mass shootings, really. Right. This is so shocking. Right. You talk to one of the victims now. Well, you know, we prepared a story for tonight, be on at uh, 6 o'clock tonight on Eyewitness News, uh, to look back uh, not only on the shooting itself, but also to take a look at, at people's lives in the 30 years that came after the shooting. Mm -hmm. And one of those people that I spoke to is a woman named Lisa Combati. Now, you have to understand, having covered this from the beginning, uh, and it dragged on as long as it did, you know, as a reporter, you get to know the subjects of your stories, uh, especially if it's a protracted basis. And uh, I got to know Lisa, and I got to know a bunch of the other uh, shooting victims, uh, survivors, and, and relatives of those who passed away. Uh, Lisa's story struck me in particular because she was on the 533 train out of mm -hmm. Penn Station, headed home from work, mm -hmm. seven months pregnant, mm. oh. and got shot. And the bullet lodged mm. between her spine and her fetus. Oh. And you really cannot imagine uh, a greater trauma, really, uh, for her to have gone through. But, but here's the point, and this is why I want to tell her story, because she survived and she thrived. Mm. And she's going back to work. I mean, she got back on the train, you know, after a period of time. She had her daughter. The daughter survived. She survived. Oh, wow. And, and her daughter's fine. And here's the great thing she told me yesterday is that her daughter is engaged. She's going to get married next year. Oh. And she yeah, looks back right. on this and says, you know, there was a time when I thought, you know, I might not even see this day. I might even not even see my child being yep. born. So profound. So I just want to show a, a clip from my interview. With yeah, Lisa. please let's, do. Let's listen. Where are you right now? I'm in a great place. My family's in a great place. My daughter is getting married um, next year. We've had 30 wonderful years um, that a lot of people didn't have. And I feel grateful for that. As we stand here on a New York City street, I am still working, you know, in the city, commuting back and forth. I still commute from the same station from Maryland Avenue, but it was always my um, wish to not let what happened to me rule my life. So I wanted to be a stronger person and I wanted to keep going. This year I finally got some closure because when the Long Island Railroad started going into Grand Central, they updated the train schedule and the 533 is no more. And that was actually kind of pivotal because I didn't have to look at that train schedule and constantly get that reminder of the 533. So that also put me in a good place. Something to be said for closure, right? Well, and it, wow. we have to remember the setting of this time. And again, I didn't even remember the story until you started talking about it. And then you said Colin Ferguson. And I'm like, that oh, name, I remember. Right? Yeah. I remember the story. But this was a time, I, I think an innocent time for us, when mass shootings weren't something that we talked about on the regular several times a week. Well, right. You had the Texas clock tower shooting. You had McDonald's in California. And that was largely it. And when you talk to the, to the relatives of, of the victims, you talk to the survivors, the thing that makes them crazy is that the situation with respect to guns in America hasn't gotten better mm -hmm. since mm -hmm. the LIRR mm -hmm. massacre. It's gotten worse. Mm -hmm. Worse. That's the thing. And this whole thing happened. The 25 people were shot, six killed. Is that what it was? Uh, yeah. Something that happened between what? Yeah. The stop between New Hyde Park and Maryland. They had right. been on the train from... Penn Station for right. about 40 minutes. And back then, people didn't have cell phones. Mm -hmm. They were asleep on the train. Yeah, some people were doing were crossword the, puzzles. Yeah, yeah. They were reading the rest of the New York Times, yeah, right. finishing the sure. puzzles. <sighs> and talk about an innocence you know, right. lost. Right. Yeah. Right. Wow. What a what a difference thirty years makes. Uh, yeah, and and to me, you know, I like to look for life affirming stories in tragedies. Sure. And, you know, Sam. Right. I mean, you've been in this business a long time. You know, yep. you really look for things like that because Amen. it's things like that, and you know this too, right? Um, as a reporter, because you 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 want to find ways to tell those stories because it helps you keep going. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, because you walk into people's lives in this job really at the worst possible time. And, and if you can find sure. some glimmer of goodness right. in these things, it really helps you as well. 
So that's why I like to tell a story like Lisa's. And that's so important for why we're doing this now, too, yeah. because to come out of that story and then have a happier tale or, or discussion yeah. afterwards, mm -hmm. to you know, kind of come out of that tragedy, but she had a good life and she had she time with her daughter. That was everything. That was. And great. God bless they're getting married. Yeah. So yeah. celebrate yeah. everything yeah. until her further strength, notice. Her strength Thank is you. incredible because before they got rid of 533, on the anniversary, I read that she would take that train symbolically, mm -hmm. and she called it mm. an act of defiance. Defiance, oh, sure. Right. Whoa. Right. Whoa. Right. I'm so mm -hmm. glad you brought that up. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Not everybody can do that, let's face it, right? Not everybody can do that. And yeah. that's not to disparage the people who say, you know what, I'm never getting on that train again. I get mm -hmm. it, okay? I do too. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, people process grief in, in so many different ways, and you see that. But we learn in watching people who've done it successfully, so thank you, Nick. And thank you yeah. for the reporting yeah. for all these years oh, on this right. particular Staying story in touch with and them. keeping their stories that. alive. Yeah, Thanks, thank you. Nick.